Here is a Sears 25 inch cabinet model color TV from 1985. A friend of mine gave me this set this morning. Nice particle board construction. And even some of the plastic fell off of it while they were moving it. Now he said this TV still worked, but sometimes the volume would go up on its own and sometimes the color would drop out which are probably easy fixes. However, I really don't have room to keep this set. It's not vintage enough for my collection and I don't want it here for the next six months while trying to find someone who's not ashamed to own such a TV anymore to give me ten or fifteen dollars for it. So, the other day a friend of a friend sent me an email and said she was looking for a console TV cabinet in order to gut and make a dog bed out of it. Now as much as I'm against that practice, I'd rather something like this end up getting gutted for that purpose than a, say, her finding a 1965 Zenith in doing that too. So I agreed to uh, pull the guts out of this TV cabinet and she's supposed to come pick it up Wednesday. She can have her particle board cabinet to make a dog bed out of. I'll have something to provide a source of electronic parts, but just for the heck of it, let's fire this thing up and just see what it does. Okay, here we go. And we have audio and high voltage. Screen's lighting up. Let's hook a converter box to this and see what happens. Okay, here we go. We have a picture. Better than the name of them. Oh yeah, let's let this roll. Uh, an example of afternoon trash TV. Let's take your pick of what channel you're on. This is our contrast. Brightness. <laughs> Hint. Well, I can see probably why the color was dropping out. This color control is very noisy. But yeah, for a 1985 TV, it's got a decent picture. Just goes to show how much better these older sets were, but like I said, it's too new for my collection. And the cabinet's in kind of rough shape, and I don't have room to keep it here for the next year to find somebody that might buy this thing from me for a few dollars. So, the picture that's on here is the last picture this TV is going to receive. And there's the model number tag, June 1985. 564 chassis prefix, that's a Sanyo built set, and assembled in USA with components from Japan. Most likely assembled in the old Warwick plant. And here's the chassis in CRT. You can tell by the amount of dirt that this was a this is a high hour set. And I see this uses one of the uh, Tri-Focus CRTs with the EFL gun. It's the same type of tube that Zenith and Magnavox and Sylvania used in some of their late 70s, early 80s sets. And those tubes are often found bad now, so I'll keep this tube as a spare in case I need it for one of those types of sets. Okay, let's pull it apart. I hate to do it to you, but uh, you know, you just just not worth much anymore. So just turn you into something, and there it is, ready to be converted to a dog bed. Let's 
get a look at this CRT label if we can. It's a Type 25 VGHP 22, made in USA. That's always a nice thing. And EIA number 274, which means this CRT was manufactured by RCA. And this tube should interchange interchange for the old tubes used in the early Zenith System 3's that are often bad so I just add this tube to the rest of my inventory okay there you go really hated to have to do this but you know it is what it is and thanks for watching and next time we'll actually save something